And I'm sure there's there's so many different ways to build Sylvaneth that I haven't explored with their new book. I literally fell in love with this glade. So I dove all of my energy literally into figuring out like how to make them work in every situation, right. even though they're very situational, right? Yeah. This is Empty Wallets here with another Army Spotlight. And today I'm joined by Christopher and we're gonna be talking about Sylvaneth. And all my trees, all of the trees, the plants. Which is- That grow. Which I'm just, just starting off on this is 90% why I bought this army specifically. The right. Was remember. the trees. You do took you them off the shelf. Do you remember when I we were- Sylvaneth. You did. And you took them. I felt bad. too nice. But remember what I was saying where if they had made Tree Lords battle line, it would be like my Game favorite day. And now they are, which is great. Spoiler so. alert. They are. <sighs> Spoiler alert. They exactly did exactly how he plays them. <laughs> That's it. Oh, you know what? I want to make sure I can hide this over here. Okay. I'm so sorry. Let's, let's, let's do this. So yeah. what well, do you, no, what do you want to know? <laughs> okay. So you play Sylvaneth. Yeah. Hopefully. Otherwise, I do. Sometimes this I might do. be this might be a weird conversation. Never played them <laughs> once. <laughs> Great. Uh, so just start off with tell me the gist of your army. What what does Sylvaneth do? I would say Sylvaneth is kind of right down the middle. They have really good shooting, they have really good magic, and they, depending on how you build them, they can kind of move all over the place. So they're really zony, is that the right word? Yeah. Like I can zone people out. Yep. I, a lot of people build them different ways. I build them very specifically, but also they utilize a lot of teleport style moves with mm -hmm. their Wake and Wildwood, which we can go over that too. Yep. Plus they just- um, Which is their terrain feature. Which is their terrain feature, yep. right? Plus they also have overgrown terrain, which if old Sylvaneth players knew, like they didn't have overgrown terrain yeah. and now they do, which, now makes it so that you kind of have, you can like start with six trees potentially, wow. which yeah. I don't want to say that because overgrown is technically different from wildwood and they it plays differently, right. but buffs. they're very, very similar. So. Okay, cool. Um, so what kind of, when you open your book to your army, yeah. you're looking at the abilities that your the Sylvaneth army has, yeah. what's kind of included in that? They have something called Seasons of War, and they're really specific to, you know, being closer to Wildwoods. You can get a ward. You mm. can get healing from them. Um, you can extend the range of some certain buffs. Yeah. Um, but you typically will, you have to pick one of those as your season, and then you take a Glade, which is their sub-faction rules. Okay, so, so the Seasons aren't your sub-faction. Mm -mm. The Glades are your sub-faction. Seasons you are both. like... A season is a specific buff you take that can then combo with certain like glades, but okay. you can kind of take, there's not like a an overall arch of like, okay, you need to take this season. It yeah. kind of depends on what glade you take. I take a certain glade um, that Oakenbrow, yeah. right? That makes the Tree Lords battle line, but then right. my season of war is the one that allows you to take a six ward at all times. Cause okay. I've just found, because I have less wounds on the table, Having that six up ward is just nice. Yeah. You can do one where like I think I can get exploding sixes. Is that okay. the, what's it what's yeah, an exploding well you, six? So when you roll a six, right. it becomes two dice. You can take something like that. You can increase the range of strike and fade and hidden paths and all okay. that good stuff. But so you pick a season and then you pick a glade. Do the buffs from your from your seasons feel pretty significant? <sighs> from from what I've found, yes. Okay. I have tested the one with the range, which is, you know what, I'm just gonna look at it because it is bothering me. Oh, the reaping. I take the reaping a lot because it adds range to your woodland depths, okay. um, which is another battle trait that they have, okay. which is strike and fade and walk the hidden paths, which cool. we can go over more. Yeah. But I have found that the ward one specifically is way more worth it because what I've what I've found, especially specifically with mine, because I don't have a lot of wounds on the table. Yeah. Just having a six ward in any kind of army is, I think it's worth it. Yeah. Just to help, it's kind of annoying where they these guys have three up saves, and if I got a six ward and I've got all out defense, they're like getting through 
yeah. you know, a plus two to save, and then they have to get a six yeah. or get through that ward. So I like taking that one. Yeah. Uh, so you've mentioned it a couple times now. Um, strike and fade yes. and the hidden paths. And I, you said the strike and fade had a different name. Um, it's not called strike and fade. Like the the actual ability is yeah. called that. But it's that's essentially what it, yeah, people so call it. Yeah, it. so it's a it's strike. No, it actually it is strike and fade. Oh, it is. Yeah, so it's okay. under from the woodland depths, okay. right? And then the strike and fade is where you're able to immediately attack, okay. right? And then you can immediately leave. So oh, how wow. how that works, right? It's that's kind of a really very broad way yeah. of just describing it, but. Typically, you can think of it as jumping from tree to tree okay. or tree to overgrown terrain right. where um, one of your big hitters, like let's say Dorothy, I take Dorothy a lot. Yeah. He can be near a tree, right? Yeah. You have to show up at the tree nine inches away, which you can get that through hidden paths. You can do that through walk the okay. spirit paths. The tree so, lords have the spirit paths. There's so many paths. So the path- Everybody's walking, <laughs> and sometimes it gets confusing, and everyone's going on a hike. So, so the paths are the essentially paths. teleporting. Yes, think okay. of them as like a teleport from tree to overgrown terrain to, to tree, tree. Okay. blah blah blah. And then the strike and fade utilizes those paths. Yes. to attack and then pull away. <laughs> yeah, and the reason why I'm laughing is because my army specifically yeah. has something called. Spirit paths, okay, which happens. Hear me out now, yep. right? The so spirit paths. <laughs> Sorry, I I'm only laughing because every time I have to explain this to somebody, because they're like, "What the heck did you just do?" And I'm yeah. like, "Well, I just walked the spirit paths. Now I'm gonna walk the hidden paths, <laughs> which you can only walk hidden paths once per phase, which okay. is at the end of your movement phase. The walk the hidden paths is you." Uh, is at the end of your phase. The spirit paths, which what the tree lords have, yep. is the start of your movement phase. Okay, so there's so, two different abilities. There's that two different, different times. things that you're walking and you're going you're in between walking trees. Paths. Yeah, and it just gives me an excuse to bounce these guys around, which cool. I've found has been a big, a big game changer for yeah. this specific army, which is not necessarily the best. Sylvaneth army out there, you know, that's my PSA right. for the people watching. So it's not the best, but you play this one a lot. This is the only, this is now the only Sylvaneth army I play. Right. Which, I do play another army, which mm-hmm. we did in our budget battle, mm-hmm. which is that Kornoth army. Yep. Which, that was the first time I literally put that on the table, and I had the Arch Rev buffing it. I had yeah. all this stuff just buffing those Kornoth hunters right. like crazy which turned out really good. That's yep. actually a pretty good army, which yeah. I don't know all the nuances of it yet, but that is a different glade than this one right? specifically. But anyway, cool. that's I now it, know that I now know that Sylvaneth can teleport using two different abilities, Hidden Paths, Spirit Paths. And, and, and I'm clarifying that too. The Tree Lords and the Tree Lord Ancients and Dorothy are the only ones that get Spirit Paths, yeah. but you can use, like a, an example of a Kornoth Hunter, they can do the Hidden Paths one. Yeah. Right. Okay. The way these ones work is just super unique because they have two different options at the right. start and at the be- uh, at the end right. of it. So that's anyway. cool. So awesome. So you've talked to you've said it a couple times. Yeah. Um, Awaken wildwood and overgrown yeah. terrain. So we know uh, that wildwood is a specific rule set in yep. Ad- in, in third edition Age of Sigmar, yes. which is. Just uh, it's just like a terrain feature, but yep. Sylvaneth specifically gets something called Awakened Wildwood, which yeah. is different than that. It's mm-hmm. a buff version. And then tell me what the difference between Awakened Wildwood and Overgrown Terrain features are. Yeah, so essentially, there's not too many differences, mm-hmm. right? The Awakened Wildwood, the biggest difference is the magic, okay. right? Um, I would say like they they essentially are the same thing. Okay, but then. In your rules and you're on your war scrolls, it's very specific. Like, add three, I'm, I'm guessing here. Yeah. Like, add three to the cat. No, this is it. Awaken the Wild Woods, which is something that happens on the end of the charge phase. Right. Right? If an enemy is within an inch of them, if a Tree Lord Ancient, I think it's a Tree Lord Ancient or one I of your think heroes. it's just a Tree Lord Ancient, yeah. can do this. One of the heroes, I, I'll have to relook that up. But if he's close, if an enemy piles in, 
or yep. sorry, finishes a charge move within an inch of those, then on a six, you take mortal wounds. Take I damage. forget the number of it. The trees attack but you. But on a four, if there is a tree lord ancient near it. Okay. Which is cool. So that is cool. Over on terrain features, they don't have that. Okay. And at the beginning of the battle, you pick three additional terrain pieces on the map to be overgrown terrain. Okay. That are wholly outside of your opponent's territory. Okay, so Awaken Wildwood are the actual Wildwood models. Yes. And then Overgrown Terrain Features- You pick them. Are just the terrain that you set up at the beginning and of the And they game. just get an extra buff from them, okay. and it's awesome. That's super cool. That's awesome. It's not um, bad. Yeah, that's super cool. And so the Hidden Paths and Spirit Paths, all, it's Overgrown Terrain, it's not yes. necessarily Wildwood. And your, your War Scroll will specify, it's like, this is only Awaken Wildwood, mm. or it's Awaken okay. Wildwood, or Wildwood, <laughs> Wildwood. <laughs> or um, it'll specify, your war score will specify okay. if it's Awaken Wildwood or both. Okay, is there anything else you know now? Places of power. That's Places what, of power. That's what they're called, technically, the overgrown terrain features, okay. right? Like you get to play, because you pick those terrain features, yep. right? Um, wholly outside your opponent's territory, and when you're near them, you get every hero phase, you're able to heal one wound for everybody oh, wow. within it. And then the Season of War, the reaping that I take, adds an additional three inches to that, so you can be 12 away instead of nine away. Wow, okay. So that's, that was something that was important. Yeah. That Which overgrown terrain features are a new thing yes. they introduced in AOS 3. Because they used to not have those, and yeah. I can't imagine them not having them now because right. they're so useful. Because I used to have a problem and you guys remember, I bought so many trees. I yes. had, I think at some point, I think I had 18. Wow. I think I bought six, I bought, I no, I didn't buy six boxes. I bought two of the big Awaken Wildwood yeah. boxes or the Glade or something. Yeah. I think it comes with nine. Wow. And then I bought two additional boxes and then I bought another one because I'm like, oh my gosh, how am I getting all these trees on the board? Yep. And now, I don't have to. You don't need them. Yeah. Yeah. So we've got, obviously, on the box and on the art, Yeah. you have Awakened Wildwood in threes. Yes. Which we see that a lot in, um, the box comes in threes. Right. So do you have to use all three? Yes, you need one, two, or three, and you do not need to do them in the big, stupid formation anymore. Okay. You can, which makes it way easier to use them, because now... I can take a tree, and depending on how you run, like I said, I don't, there's a, still a lot about Sylvaneth that uh, I need to learn, mm. but the way I do it is I use Acorn of the Ages, which we'll get to artifacts at some yep. point, right? But you're able to take a tree and with a, uh, an ability from the Tree Lord, I can go set this up anywhere on the battlefield now. Mm. It's a once per battle That's cool. thing. Right, it's silent something. Yeah, um, and I can set this up anywhere on the battlefield, which is awesome. But I used to be like, oh my gosh, I have to figure out how to set up three of these things. Right. Some army faction terrain, yeah. Some armies they are placed before the, you know, before the game starts. Yeah, is that the same for Wildwood, or are, do you have to summon them? Because you mentioned that you can oh. get a free summon. Do yeah. they have to be summoned in after the game starts? No, you can actually, you can start with being able to place a small wild, or mm. awakened wildwood, a medium awakened wildwood, or a large awakened wildwood. Okay. Right, which is either one, two, or three. Right. And they, so you, you get that option. Okay. What I'm finding is that I set up a large one mm -hmm. at the beginning to make sure, regardless, this could be any unit, right? Yeah. They're kind of around them. Specifically for mine, I like to have them all jump out, right, right. and do their thing. Um, but that's how I do it. Okay. So yes, you do, you're able to do that. Cool, mm -hmm. awesome. Are there any other army, holistic army buffs that you get alongside? Um, Wildwood seems to be a really big part. I know that's faction it, terrain, but that's a big part. I think part. that's like a, I think that's like one of their biggest okay. benefactors to yeah. their army is y utilizing the woods. Are there any other notable uh, command traits or artifacts that you want to mention about uh, Sylvanet? Dep it's, so I kind of do two different builds, and you can use these for anybody, yeah. right? 
the ones I've found that are really good are the Vesperal Gem, especially yeah. if you have a magic heavy. If you're taking gnarl, uh, gnarl wood or gnarl root, mm -hmm. uh, that's a glade. They yep. get really big busts of magic, and the Vesperal Gem is awesome for them yep. because you could put that on one of your wizards and then have another wizard with extra casting buffs. I think that's what it is. Uh, but anyway, so the Vesperal Gem is a good one because you're able to roll a dice and your your spell is automatically cast regardless, right? Yeah. Um, and it's only from your book, though, like your, okay. the actual yep. Sylvaneth spells. You can't do that with like an endless spell or something right. like that. Um, and it doesn't work for dispels either. But it's auto cast, and you roll a dice on a one, um, you'll take mortal wounds. Yeah. But that one's really good. The Acorn of the Ages is literally just an extra tree. So just a tree on the table. Yeah, it's 12 inches away from your caster, and okay. you just set it on the table. Great. I don't have a problem with ever getting trees on the table because I have two ways of doing that. Right. Right? Two ways of doing that yep. for free. I can start with three, and then I can... Uh, and then everybody has Vernon Blessing, which is another universal one, which I'll get yep. to, right? Um, everybody, every... I shouldn't say everybody. Every wizard has the opportunity to grow another tree. It's okay. a spell. It has to be holy within 18. They, I think it's like a casting value of a uh, drum roll, please. That's fine. Go. A six. Okay. So every wizard has... Um, is this a once per battle spell? Or is this no, a, this is, this is a spell you can just keep popping do. trees off. You can. It okay. has a casting value of six within 18, holy within 18, I think. And that's, yeah. that's a way you can get trees. Or, but that's the thing, it could be dispelled. Yeah. So right. if you're really yep. looking for tree placement, I take Acorn of the Ages just right. so that Guarantee I can utilize the placement. movement. Yeah. Because that's a big one with Strike and Fade, right? Okay. Is when you're able to utilize that, and like, for example, when Dorothy, Spirit of Dorothy goes in, yeah. and then he's able to go out, yeah. it's awesome. Nasty. So, yeah. Are there any command traits that. I, there's not really. So, I mean, that could just be a no, there's yeah. not really notable command I've, traits. I've but. got one. One I would take is um, Spell Singer because it acts like Umbral Spell Portal where mm. you can choose wow. a wild, Awaken Wildwood on the battlefield and you can cast your spell wow. from that tree. That's pretty cool. Right? Yeah. So, which is awesome because even... Um, spell Portal, you have to be near. Yeah. This one, I literally can just you pick just it. You just do it. And you just do it. That's crazy. So, and I'm I'm double checking that because I do want to make sure I got that right. But yeah. yes, that's awesome. Which is cool. That's super cool. So, a lot of their spells might have twelve or like eighteen. Yeah. But if you have, I mean, if you got trees on the other side. If you got a tree table, over here, you got a tree right here. Yeah. And I got a wizard here. I pick one on the battlefield, and that's where my spell yep. comes from. And you said that that's only awakened wildwood. That's not that is only terrain. awakened right. wildwood. Cool. So that's where a difference comes in right. between. Overgrown and an actual yep. awakened wildwood. So. Cool. Uh, yeah. So obviously they've got wizards. This is a wizard army, not a priest army. Yes. So. Oh, but they have a way for them to be a priest. Really? When it comes to dispelling invocations. Interesting. You can use Luna's lamp, Luna's lamp, Lana's lamp, J Jimmy John's lamp. Great. The I lamp. I can't speak. But you can banish an invocation like wow. a priest would, okay. and you can add two to your dispels and that's your cool. uh, banishment. So I just kicked a box. Oh, that's okay. Yeah. Um, so that's I, I, that's a question I'd have to ask because it doesn't say like so. Does that mean I get plus two to? It's I think it's only for invocations because if I had a plus two every time some a priest would try to. No, it's just, so yeah, invocations. I think it's just invocations. It would just be invoca um, invocations, not prayers. In addition, add two to dispelling rolls, but then you get two to dispelling rolls. So, anyway. so it doesn't do, it doesn't cancel out prayers, but it cancels out invocations, which is big. Yeah. Because you have to be, you have to be a you priest. You have to be a priest, whereas the other way around, a priest can still dispel which is, an endless spell. And that's an artifact of, um, uh, an artifact of power. So you could essentially put that with gnarl root, right? And have a crazy magic. You could have a bunch of different That's stuff. Cool. So okay. Um, so their magic army with yes. an artifact that could potentially give them a little bit of priest. Yep. Um, counters. Mm -hmm. Are there any spells in their arsenal that you're like, this is a pretty cool spell? I would definitely look into it. 
Um, there's there's a couple. I love their endless spells. Okay. Um, <laughs> I've got one here for us. This one. I just like because it's another tree. Yeah. And it's another way I can <laughs> buy another tree and do you have a base. more trees on the table. Um, I do like that one because that is a predatory endless spell. Okay. Uh, I call it, it's Venge Root. Um, yep. And you can basically, if it finishes, like you, if you pass over somebody, yep. it does D3 mortal wounds. And if you're close to a wild or Awaken Wildwood, yep. it adds its D6 mortal wounds. So I like. I like the, and I'm a huge Endless Spell fan, and there's right. a couple Endless Spells that I like, specifically with mine that I'll throw in there. I like um, Shackles. Yep. Uh, I like Jaws. Um, I didn't get a chance to play uh, the new rules with mm. um, Purple Sun yet, but okay. there's some, I, so I like Endless Spells. Yeah. Um, tree cool. Song. I like Tree Song because it's basic. It improves rain characteristic. Yeah. Uh, they also have a really good heal. Um, I think it's on a it's a D six heal. I don't remember the name of it. Okay. But, yeah. Um, they yeah they have some good they have some good magic because when you combo their spells with Spell Singer, you can kind of do their magic Just all, over the, all over the if table. you decide yeah. to take that that's cool. command trait. So that's why I like them. So in AOS three we introduced core battalions, yeah. um, heroic actions, and monstrous rampages. Does Sylvaneth have any specific army ones for any of those three? Yeah, their biggest one is um, that ground shaking stop. Okay, which um, is which is a strike last effect. Is it? Uh, and it's a monstrous, monstrous rampage. rampage. Okay. Um, in the other book, which you guys have found that that's just it's really good. Yes. In the other book, if I'm not mistaken, I could do that with everybody. Right. But I didn't play Sylvaneth a lot because I wasn't into them because I went into Sons. Right. right? But now. You have a monstrous rampage on a, I think it's on a three. You get wow. do a strike last, so I can literally take somebody in with a you strike and target fade. a unit, and they strike last, and, and then I can leave, and then another unit could attack them if it's wow. close by. Like anyway, so that that one's a big one. Yeah, and I'm sure there's there's so many different ways to build Sylvaneth that I haven't explored with their new book. I literally fell in love with this glade, so I dove. All of my energy, literally, into figuring out like how to make them work in every situation, right. even though they're very situational, right? Yeah. Um, and that's just because I'm trying to figure out like if if somebody's got a nasty ward, mm -hmm. I don't have a lot of attacks. All my attacks hit hard, but I don't have a lot of attacks, yep. right? So I'm not rolling. I think the max dice I'd ever roll is with Dorthew when he's buffed is like six. Yep. You can do it in a way with. Green Gladys to buff him up. You can really buff up a Dorthew. Right. Um, with Gnarled Warrior to make him really tanky, and then Greenwood and Gladys. he hits pretty hard. He does, because yeah. when he hits, he hits really hard. Yeah, it's a pretty common theme. Battle tactics and grand strategies yeah. right now are just really tough. Yeah. Uh, does your army offer any ones that you're like, this is a pretty good one? Or yes. are, they, are they all pretty much like, yeah, you know, you're just gonna pick what you can and hope for the best. I, I'm I'm gonna open this really quick. Yeah. Because um yes. Um to answer that, I I do use I do not use their grand strategies a whole lot. Okay. They're okay. Um defend what's ours is the one I typically take with Sylvaneth because yep. I can kind of make sure that they don't come back into my territory by using Awaken Wildwood. Cool. Right? Because I can teleport back. So if somebody is like, somebody else teleports, if they get moved, they have 24 inch movement yep. or what crazy movement to just get into my territory, at least I can get back. As long as they're not within three, because there's specific rules um, that doesn't allow you to use Awaken Wildwood if enemies are near it, which mm. is. Which is another like little tip on how to really mess up this army yeah. is if you just put everything near their wildwood, they can't teleport back to it. Oh, interesting. And, and that's something that people forget because I wouldn't be able to use strike and fade to get back to my grand strategy if somebody was on top of my wood or destroys it because yeah. you can use smash to rubble. So I don't use a lot of theirs. Their battle tactics though are not bad. Okay. Um, I like um, harness the spirit paths. 
because it's really easy to it's really easy to get. Right. And I I almost do that every I almost get that one whenever I pick it. I typically get so it. So it's one you pick pretty much every game. Every game. Perfect. And typically like in round one, because going off those battle tactics, I typically will decide to go first if I can okay. with Sylvaneth. I know I'm kind of spitballing here, but yeah. it kind of all ties into, because you're able to use Harness of Spirit Paths pretty yep. easily if you decide to go first. Yeah. Plus, I go first a lot so th- I can get my tree placement places yeah. because you have to be away from people if you're trying to get specific trees to be placed in yep. certain spots. So cool. anyway, I do, I use some of them, but I don't use all of them. Okay. So we know that you like to play the tree lords yes. as, a, as an army yes. um, using oak and brow. Yes. Are there any other models and combos yeah. that you think are notable and you would recommend? Yes. The other ones, if you're looking for magic, you want to go Gnarl, uh, Gnarl Root. Okay. They're really magic-based. Uh, my other units that I really like are all the versions of the Kornoth Hunters. Okay. The the swords, the scythes, yeah. um, the bows. There's there's a combo, and I don't remember the exact, um, the exact way it works, but you can get their rend really. Right. Like, Which I think that, that, that was in the that was budget battle. We, that right. crazy yeah. mix was it's like minus four. Yeah, you can really with an arch rev, you can really buffed up a Kornoth yeah. hunter. And people forget, like, oh shoot, they also have really good save. So right, um, I don't really use a whole lot. I've you know I don't I've yeah. never used Ilariel. I want to because she has some mechanic where she can turn things into overgrown terrain once. Per wow. battle, she's able to take all the terrain pieces and make them overgrown terrain. Okay. Which is dope. That's super cool. I've never used her, but my other favorite unit is definitely Kornoth Hunters. Okay. Just because um, I've, n- I've just never been a huge fan of the Dryads or yeah. the Spites. Or I tried, um, gosh, the, the chick with the bees. <laughs> Can't remember her name. I, Drycha? Drycha, something like that. Yeah. I liked her. Um, yeah. But it just was never something that I used a lot. Yeah. So Kornoth Hunters, Tree Lord Ancients, and Tree Lords are my favorite units. So I was over yep. the moon. And you've had fun playing with them, and they and, you know, feel I, good. And I my win rate is probably 50, I would say 50-50 on them. Because okay. there are some armies that I'm really good against. Yeah. Um, and then there's just some armies where I just get wiped. Yep. Like I'll go up I went up against a Seraphon player and I was destroyed in you know round yeah. 2. Your Jeez. fire slayers yeah destroyed in round 2. But he they do do well during um you said do do. Do do. <laughs> they do very well against specific armies but I have fun playing them. Yeah. So cool. It's also a way that I was able to use the tree beard model. Right uh, from Games Workshop, Tree Beard and two uh, and two Ents. Two so. Ents. That's fun. If I was interested in playing Sylvaneth, what would you say um, I should really look into or tips that you yeah. like? Pretty, you know, best mm-hmm. tip. I I think before you buy, right, or like when if you're looking at the army, don't buy eighteen trees. Do don't buy eighteen trees. Okay. Max, and this is actually a pro tip. Yeah. <laughs> do not buy more than six trees. Great pro tip. You will not use for them for free. You could, but then at that point, I feel like you'd be losing out on other buffs you probably should have yeah. taken. Um, I would really look into which glade you really like okay. and start there. Cool. Like if you want to do heartwood and you're like, I really like Kornoth Hunters, I'm going to go heartwood gotcha. because it's around them, right? Cool. Um, and if I really like their magic and I like their tree, you know, wizards, yeah. then I do Gnarl Root, right? So it kind of depends on, um, it depends on what your play style is. For me, it's always rule of cool. Yep. I build most of my armies based on models that I like, and see if it see if it'll yeah. work. I bought this army originally because I wanted plants and trees. Yep. And now. The Tree Lords are battle line, and I'm so happy with them. Great. And I don't build, I could build the, you know, I could build them other ways. Yeah. I just don't. Yeah. So last question. Yeah. Um, I'm about to play you or somebody else that's that's playing Sylvaneth. 
right. um, and I want to know what are some tips on to beat you or some yeah. things to really look out for. Yeah, I specifically when when I tell somebody like when they ask me like what what can I expect with your army? Yeah. Um, and I'm trying to, I'm going to try to be a little bit more generic rather yeah. than cuz this is a very specific way to right. build them. They move around a lot. They have some great shooting. Mm-hmm. They have some good heals. They're they're I feel right now are a very well balanced army. Okay. And you just will have to deal with extra terrain features because, yep. uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think they're the most terrain feature heavy army. Yeah. Because I can have as many trees as I want. Right. Hypothetically. You just keep dropping right? them. And so these these trees do get annoying at some point because yeah. when I put them right on on a, like right on an objective, I have to be three inches away typically, but that's still really close. If I can put these on objectives, that's awesome because I can jump to an objective if I need yeah. to. So for somebody who's looking to like how, like what's coming at me with Sylvaneth, yep. they'll move around. They yeah. they can get places that you'll just forget. Oh shoot, they can actually walk these weird paths yeah. to uh, actually get over on this objective and yep. they'll just sit there and then I can just go right back to another objective. So right. And what would be a weak a point then? So I would say one of their biggest weaknesses is positioning, right? Okay. Because a lot of their positioning involves uh, the use of specific synergies that they have. Right. And that's on, like, if I'm not being careful, Dorothy might not do anything. I've, mm. I've had Dorothy, because I placed him wrong, just not do anything. Because I'm like, I'm going to strike and fade. Right. But then I have to make a nine-inch charge. And sometimes I don't get that, right? Right. Um, so when you're striking and fading, you got to really make sure it's like, hey, that's why it's good to take Bloodthirsty if you have lower points than your opponent yep. to take that Triumph because if you can, it's almost like you can zone yourself out. Right. Because I could get somebody way far it's too away far, yeah. and then they're just not a part of the battle. Right. Um, so I would, I utilize them on getting getting them in, Okay. right? Uh, plus, they have some cool summon abilities, which is awesome. But that you got to be really careful with your placement, where you're placing your trees, where you're picking your overgrown yep. terrain features, because you can really utilize that stuff. Cool. So and, as an opponent, yeah. I'm going to want to kind of push you, kind of segregate your units, maybe yeah. get close to a wild once so you can't teleport there anymore. Yep. Um, just separate your your army a little bit. Yeah, because. Cool. If you can zone me out, it's it, it goes both ways, right? It, if you can zone me out and cancel me from moving, yep. then um, that's a way water. to... Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so it, anybody who's looking to play these, they're a lot of fun. They're I think they're a really well-rounded army right now, especially with their new update, and yeah. they just look cool. Cool. So Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, if you want to know more about Sylvaneth, uh, Commenting is great, but join our Discord. We're all in there. We want to talk about Sylvaneth. I'm sure that Christopher could talk on and on about Sylvaneth and all the things and I'm so that they bad do. bad sometimes at re- responding, but, but I, that's okay. I swear but to goodness we're in I there. see them. Uh, and there's other people too that would love to talk about Sylvaneth. So uh, join the Discord. We'll also have two links down in the description to give you some examples of how to build a list on 1,000 points and 2,000 points uh, with what Christopher has put together, what he likes to play with, um, kind of show you some real life examples of what he talked about. Um, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and thank you again for watching.